Now let's consider the Frenchman Jules Dupuy and his early seminal contributions to microeconomics. Dupuy was a French engineer, though he was born in Italy, and his two key articles date from the 1840s. In these articles, he laid out a good deal of what was later found in Alfred Marshall and became part of mainstream microeconomics. Dupuy had a very clear sense of diminishing marginal utility and how that would serve as the foundation for a downward-sloping demand curve. Imagine, for instance, an individual who values the first unit of a good at 10, the second unit of the same good at 8, the third unit of the same good at 6, the fourth unit at 4, and so on. We then can draw a graph which has price on the vertical axis, quantity on the horizontal axis, and the demand curve for that individual will be downward sloping. For instance, at a price equal to 9, we will find that the individual will buy just one unit of the good, buy the unit which is worth 10, but not buy the second unit which is only worth 8. But for instance, if now the price is 7, we find that same individual will buy two units of the good because the second unit is worth 8 and that's worth more than the 7, and so on, and there you get the downward sloping demand curve. Dupuy then used that downward sloping demand curve to solve for what we now call consumer surplus. So if you imagine, for instance, that the price is here at 7, and this is what the demand looks like, well, the consumer surplus is how much extra utility people get for units of the good above and beyond the 7 they're paying for the price, and we would graph that simply by filling in this area. It's the area where the demand curve is lying above the price, and that's a measure of consumer gain. Dupuy then used this idea of consumer surplus to solve for the optimal pricing of supply, and he found this would imply marginal cost pricing. For instance, if there is a bridge and the marginal cost of an extra person crossing that bridge is zero, say there's no congestion, then the optimal price for the bridge should be zero, and Dupuy argued and indeed showed numerically that a price of zero in this instance would maximize consumer surplus. Of course, this is all foundational for modern microeconomics. In Dupuy's exact example, he said if you have a toll of zero, you'll get 100 crossings. At a toll of 12, you'll get zero crossings. He listed tolls in between the number of crossings, and he found that at the highest toll, the utility lost amounts to 445, and the utility surplus is maximized at the toll being equal to zero. Again, this is all right on the mark. Dupuy also understood that when you price at marginal cost, and that can sometimes be zero, that sometimes you'll have to worry about how to pay for the fixed costs of an enterprise, and Dupuy understood the government may need to pay for those fixed costs. Dupuy also had an understanding of natural monopoly, and he argued that railways could, in particular instances, be natural monopolies. That is, in a typical setting, there would be only one supplier with market power. Dupuy also had an understanding of what we now call price discrimination, and he argued this could help an economy or a sector reach an optimum. So the buyers who value the good most, say on this part of the demand curve, they should be paying higher prices. The buyers who value the good at this part of the demand curve, they should be paying lower prices here, and so on down the demand curve with lower prices yet. And Dupuy understood that you can arrive at an optimum by charging buyers differential prices depending on how much they value the good or service in question. This is all really impressive, and in the 1840s, few other economists other than Cournot had a comparable understanding of microeconomics. Now, if you want to read Dupuy himself, his two pieces, they have been translated into English, but they are not readily available on the web, not even through JSTOR, but the references are here if you wish to track those down. I would say this, though, brilliant though Dupuy may be, reading him isn't actually any fun. It's a pretty dry exercise. It's remarkable how much mathematical micro he understood, but nonetheless, by reading him, I'm not sure you get additional insights. To read about Dupuy, well, you can start by just Googling his name, also, there are numerous good History of Thought articles on Dupuy by an economist named Robert Akeland. Those are mostly available on JSTOR. And online and free, there are two particular articles you might want to look at, and you can Google to those two. The titles are listed here. 
Finally, Dupuis was quite well known and influential as a hydraulic engineer, further evidence of his brilliance, and if you want, you can track down and research that entire different side of his career.